Hi, Dave Markham here for the Brock Porter. Uh, today is uh, Sunday. It is November 16th, 2014, and I'm starting a new uh, vlog, as they call it. Uh, a vlog is video, kind of like a blog, which is usually written. Anyway, this is going to be a vlog, and I'm just going to uh, share with you some of my uh, ideas and uh, observations about what have happened during the previous week in Brockport. So it was kind of an interesting week. Uh, you know, the Brockport Quarterly Journal is complete and is at the uh, publishers right now. Uh, hopefully uh, later this week, around November 20th or 21st, uh, it should be coming in. And this is the volume one, number one. Uh, overall, uh, theme is managing the housing stock, and uh, the key article is uh, when houses are no longer homes, the devolution of neighborhoods in a college town. And um, there's a lot of interesting articles in it, starting off with Pam. Uh, Ketchum, writing about the Webster Real Estate Management Company Empire. Uh, the Websters, so I've been told, are the second largest uh, rental property owners in Brockport after Norman Gian Giancurzio. Uh, and it turns out that I uh, have heard that uh, Mr. Giancurzio is starting to pass petitions in the village to get signatures to put a disillusion proposition on the ballot again uh, in June or whenever they can get it done. Uh, I guess they need 900 signatures. Uh, Chief Chief Ferretti sent an email to some people saying that uh, he didn't like rumors being spread about possibility of a disillusion vote because he's got a lot of young officers on the uh, Brockport Police Force and he doesn't want them leaving for other jobs. Uh, thinking that they aren't going to have a job in a year or two. Uh, and unless he could confirm uh, the fact that petitions were actually being circulated, uh, he didn't want to participate in spreading that rumor. And a day or two later, somebody sent an email and said, in fact, somebody had appeared at their front door, and in fact, it, where it was asked to sign a petition uh, to put the disillusion on the ballot. So apparently... Uh, Mr. Giancurcio is out there doing his work. Uh, the word is that that was discussed at the uh, Sweden uh, Republican Committee meeting. And uh, I don't know if the Sweden Republicans are supporting his effort to dissolve the village, but they can't even run the town, which we'll get to in a few minutes. So uh, it's hard to believe that uh, they'd want to take on the management and administration of village operations when they have performed so poorly <laughs> on the town uh, operations, so, uh, which might lead us to the next topic, which is the village court, and Mayor Blackman in the meeting on uh, uh, November 3rd of the uh, village board gave an update. Um, the village court is going to be in uh, village hall at 49th State Street, and uh, apparently are going to be hearing their first cases in February. Uh, now, the word is that the town of Sweden is going to lose anywhere from uh, seventy dollars to $140,000 in fine revenue. So uh, the people at the town of Sweden are hurting. Of course, the uh, Sweden town court, which has three justices, has been terribly mismanaged for years. And has always cost the town taxpayers money, although they've hit it because of the way they account for the expenses in the town budget. But nonetheless, uh, they can't hide their deficits anymore because it's been so poorly managed that uh, now they're going to be running a loss. And so because the town of Sweden is uh, going to be running deficits because they can't get our fine money anymore, uh, you know, they've been uh, pretty stingy about spending money on uh, the Senior Citizen Center, and uh, uh, they're saying that, um, you know, they're not going to be able to meet the tax cap this year. They're going to go over the tax cap because they're going to have to raise uh, 
uh, taxes uh, because they aren't going to have the 70 grand from the town court. So, uh, you know, while four years ago the village of Brockport was being accused by the disillusionists as being such poor managers that almost brought the village to bankruptcy, uh, now it's been flipped exactly the other way, and it looks like the town, while not on the verge of bankruptcy, obviously is going to have to raise money uh, some other way than through fines to finance their operation or cut some of their operations. The uh, uh, police department, Brockport Police Department, uh, released <laughs> re released a press release about some uh, character. He happens to be uh, apparently a 21-year-old guy from Fairport who was in Brockport selling, uh, selling heroin. And somebody spotted him with a gun uh, over on uh, State Street Canal Road somewhere. And uh, I guess the cops came swooping down on this poor fella. And uh, here in the freezing weather, he jumps into the canal. Uh, for real. Yeah, the guy jumps into the canal, ditches the gun, and uh, apparently is treading water in the middle of the canal, uh, even though they're throwing life preservers and they're going to get the rescue boat out there to, to, to fish him out. But apparently he got so hypothermic that he decided that he could either freeze to death in the canal or <laughs> swim to capture by the cops. So I guess he did swim over to the bank there and the cops, uh, uh, you know, captured him and arrested him. And uh, uh, the last I heard, you know, he was arraigned in uh, Sweden Town Court uh, and uh, is in the Monroe County Jail unless he's posted bond. I don't know. Anyway, it was a colorful story, if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, on a more serious note, though, uh, the Stop DWI of Monroe County uh, released their third quarterly report, which says that the Brockport Police DWI arrests are up significantly, while many of the DWI arrests in other jurisdictions, including the SUNY Campus Police, which is down, are up. So the Brockport uh, Village Police are doing a great job on DWI arrests. DWI arrests are very labor-intensive. It takes probably two, three, four hours to adjudicate uh, a DWI arrest. So uh, hats off to uh, Chief Rennie and his staff doing a great job uh, with the DWI uh, arrests in our village. It makes it safer for all of us. As you may know, two of my children were killed in a DWI crash back in 1993. Bridget was five and Ryan was eight. And I still speak on the DWI victim impact panel in uh, Genesee County, Orleans County, and Wyoming County. And, uh, you know, I point out to the people in the audience that terrorists aren't going to kill you, but a DWI driver probably uh, has a much greater chance. Uh, we Americans are afraid of all the wrong things because of the silly stuff that our media promulgates for various agendas. Uh, here at the Brockport, you get the, at Brockport, you get the straight scoop. Uh, I really believe in the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. And what you get from the Brockporter, uh, as best as uh, we are able, is to give you the facts and give you the truth. Uh, you might not like it. It might not fit with your opinions or your prejudices or your uh, faulty generalizations, but uh, we try to tell it like it is. So the fact is you're not going to get killed by a terrorist in spite of what our government tells you and the trillions of dollars we spent on wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, now, uh, you know, uh, politically, Iraq has fallen apart with ISIS and all this nonsense. So they got you scared that the boogeyman is going to get you. He's under your, under your bed and coming across the borders and all that kind of nonsense. When the real danger here are, is twofold. Uh, it's DWI drivers that are going to kill you and your family. Uh, and guns. You know, the likelihood that you have a gun in your house increases the likelihood you'll die by a gun about three times. 
Uh, so people that get guns thinking they're going to be safer, the public health statistics uh, point just the opposite, that it's much more likely you'll be killed by a gun if you uh, have a gun. So uh, the answer to the gun violence problem is not to go get a gun and shoot the bad guys before they shoot you. That's just craziness. And uh, yet we get told that all the time by the NRA and all these people that are fighting Governor Cuomo's uh, safe initiative and all that. Uh, you know, they're just dead wrong. New York State is the fourth lowest gun violence state in the United States. Uh, we're doing very well. And one of the reasons that you're safer in New York State when it comes to gun violence is because of the stricter gun laws that we have here. So whenever you see those signs out on people's lawns saying repeal the safe gun uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's just not true. Uh, they don't have their facts straight. and Yeah, you're getting the facts here, though. So uh, if you don't believe me, look it up. Uh, I wouldn't lie to you, and, and that's the way it is. Uh, <clears throat> it was a pro Brockport meeting this past Saturday on uh, uh, November 15th. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend, but I uh, was told that the reason for the meeting was to discuss how they can uh, deal with the uh, dissolutionist passing this petition to try to get uh, Brockport disillusion on, on the ballot. And uh, they're being very proactive uh, this time. They're uh, out in numbers and they are uh, trying to inform people so that people don't sign this silly petition. Uh, Brock, Village of Brockport has never been better managed and uh, there are many indicators maybe I'll share with you next week about uh, Brockport's high performance and uh, uh, much improved management. Uh, this week is, uh, of course, the last full week before Thanksgiving. Uh, we're looking forward to Thanksgiving this year, and it makes me wonder uh, what we're grateful for. There's many, many things that I am grateful for. Uh, and um, one, of the, one of the most important probably is uh, besides my family, the pride I have in the community. Uh, Brockport is a great community. Uh, I was born in Bath, New York, but my parents came here when I was six months old in 1946. And uh, I've lived here on and off most of my life. Uh, my mother, God rest her, lived in my family home at 62 Monroe Avenue for 60 years, from 1946 to 2006. In the last two and a half years of my mother's life, she lived with me here at 46 King Street with my daughter, Katie, and uh, my two grandchildren, Haley and Eris. And mom died uh, July 10th, uh, 2011. Uh, and so lived most of her adult life here in Brockport and uh, came here from Hammondsport, New York to go to college and was very proud of the fact that she was in the first class in 1942 to graduate from the Brockport State Teachers College. Prior to that, it only took a three-year diploma from the normal school to get a teaching certificate in New York State. But in 1942 was the first year they required a four-year baccalaureate degree. And New York State had converted all its normal schools, as they were called, uh, teacher preparation institutions, to state teachers' colleges. And my mother was always proud of the fact that she was one of the first graduates from Brockport State Teachers College and sent me and my siblings to the Brockport Campus School. And uh, the roots here uh, are very, very deep uh, in Brockport. The uh, Brockporter Quarterly Journal is on sale at Amazon.com. If you go to Amazon.com, just Google my name as the author, David G. Markham, and you will see the Brockport Quarterly Journal, uh, as well as uh, some other books I've written. 
and uh, the journal will be available at the Liftbridge Bookshop, 45 Main Street, Brockport, New York, at the end of this coming week, probably on November 21st, 22nd. Thanks for watching. See you next week. It's Dave Markham. Have a good week.